welcome to part two of Escape Velocity in Physics from Nothing. So today we're going to go over what the math is behind the equation for escape velocity. So remember last time I had this ball and I was throwing it up and it always came back down into my hands. But we told you there was a speed that I could throw it at that it would not come back down to my hands and just fly up into space. So let's go through the maths for that. So we're going to start with the kinetic energy of the ball. So I'm going to write this as EK for kinetic energy. And this is equal to a half times the mass of the ball, which I'll write as little m, times the speed of the ball squared. I'll write that as V squared. So we're going to measure the mass of the ball in kilograms and the speed of the ball in meters per second. And that means that the units of energy are kilograms for the mass times meters squared divided by seconds squared from the speed squared. So that's the kinetic energy of the ball. The second thing that we need for this is the gravitational potential energy of the Earth. So I'll write that as EG for gravitational energy. And this is equal to Newton's constant, which I write as big G, times the mass of the ball again, times the mass of the Earth, which is big M, divided by the radius of the Earth, which I write as R. Now, big G, which we've got written over here in our constants table, is about 7 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram per second squared. And this number is what determines how strong the gravitational force is. And you can see that it's a really tiny number, and this is what um, makes the gravitational force the weakest of the forces. Great, so now that we know the two equations that we need that are both in terms of energies, we can solve for the escape velocity. And we do that by setting these two equations equal to each other. So it basically says, how fast do I have to be going to overcome this amount of energy? What's that speed? So let's do some math. I'll set the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, where the little m again is the mass of the ball, equal to Newton's constant g times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the ball divided by the radius of the Earth. Now here an interesting cancellation happens. You can see that both sides depend in the same way on little m. And that means that it doesn't matter if we're throwing a ball or a rocket into space, they both have the same escape velocity. So it doesn't depend on what you're trying to throw into space, it only depends on the mass of the Earth or any object that you're trying to escape from and its radius. Now solving for the escape velocity, which I'll call V sub E, we find that the escape velocity is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2 times Newton's gravitational constant times the mass of the Earth divided by its radius. Uh, plus or minus comes in when we take the square root, but this really just means that the escape velocity can be in any direction. So we'll only concern ourselves with the positive velocities for now, but you can also go backwards if you like. So the escape velocity of the Earth, we told you in our last episode, was about 11 kilometers per second, and this is how we find it. So if you substitute in the values of g, m and r, we find 2 times 7 times 10 to the minus 11, this is g, times the mass of the Earth, which is about 6 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, and we divide this by the radius of the Earth, which is about 6,000 kilometers. But because we're using meters, and these are called SI units, we're going to write this in meters. So 6,000 kilometers is 6 million meters. So that's 6 times 10 to the 6 meters. 
And once we crunch all these numbers, we find that indeed the escape velocity of the Earth is about 11,000 meters per second. Now, if you're watching this video in the UK or in the US, you might be more comfortable with miles per hour. So 11,000 meters per second is about 25,000 miles per hour. And this is how fast we need to launch any kind of satellite that leaves the gravitational pull of the Earth or any kind of rocket. So when we launched the Curiosity probe, we had to launch it at about 25,000 miles per hour so that it could reach Mars and escape the gravitational attraction of the Earth. So that was the escape velocity of the Earth, but by using the mass and the radius of different objects in our solar system, we can find their escape velocity too. So here we've got some written down. So we just did the Earth, and here are the mass and radius of the Moon. So the mass of the Moon is 7 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, and the radius of the Moon is about 2 times 10 to the 6 meters. So if we plug those in, we could work out that the escape velocity of the Moon is about 2,300 meters per second, and that is about 5,300 miles per hour. So why don't you try working out the escape velocity of Mars? If the mass of Mars is about 6 times 10 to the 23 kilograms, and the radius of Mars is about half of that of the Earth. Hey, thanks for listening for today. Tune in next time we'll be taking this formula to the limit, so tune in for that. Bye. Bye.